Welcome back. Today we'll be covering the fourth topic you need to know to pass your math GED, graphs and functions. Additional study resources for each individual section will be linked in the description. I'm not overlaying background music on this video, so let me know in the comments if you prefer not having the music. Alright, let's get started. Number 1. Locate points and graph equations. Let's plot three points. We have the x-axis and y-axis, and when looking at points, the x variable will come first, followed by the y variable. So when we have negative 4, 1, we'll move back negative 4 on the x-axis and up 1 on the y-axis. So that would be j right there. When we have 0, 3, we'll not move anywhere off the x-axis, so we stay in the center and go up 3 spots. So it'd be 0, 3, or k right there. For negative 2, positive 3, we'll move back 2 here and then up 3 right there. On the GED, the problem will be in reverse of what we just did, where it'll show you the graph and ask you which points are correct in the multiple choice possible answers. For graphing equations, we'll remember that lines have an equation that looks like y equals mx plus b, where m represents the slope, and slope is going to be the rise over the run, and b represents the y-intercept. So let's say that the question asks you to determine the equation of the line shown here. We can start by knowing that the equation will start with y equals, and then let's find the y-intercept, that is negative 2, and the slope being the rise over the run, what comes up 1 and over 2. Okay, so we know that it is going to be 1 half. It is running from the in this direction, meaning that it's going to be negative. If it was running in this direction at all, it would be positive slope. But since we're going from this quadrant to this quadrant, it's going to be negative. And then x, and it is a negative 2y intercept. Number 2. Slope of a line from a graph equation and table. To determine the slope of a line from a graph, it is the rise over the run which we covered in skill number 1. So jump back to that if you want to re review. Determining the slope of a line from an equation, you'll need to isolate the y variable. So as an example, it asks you to determine the slope in the equation x plus 4y equals 8. So first we will move over the x to the other side, so then we will have 4y equals negative x plus 8. And then we will divide everything by 4 to isolate the y. So we'll have 4y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then the slope, again, it is that negative 1 fourth, so the answer would be negative 1 fourth. For determining the slope of a line from a table, you will select two appropriate points from that table and then determine the slope of the line. Uh, and if you want to see how to do that, jump ahead to skill number six, where we cover determining the slope from two points. Number three, proportional relationships for equations and graphs. A proportional relationship, all you need to know is that it's some fancy words to describe the slope. So a question could be, Cody sells snacks. The equation P equals 3S can be used to find profit P for Cody after selling S snacks. What does 3 represent in the equation? Well, 3 is the proportional relationship between Cody's profit and the number of snacks that he sells. So what does 3 represent in the equation? Well, let's say he were to sell 10 snacks, and that would end up being $30. Well, it should be obvious that 3 is the price per snack in that proportional relationship. Number four, features of graphs and tables. 
With the knowledge of skills number one through three combined, we're going to be interpreting graphs uh, or data points from tables that would be overlaid on a graph. So I am going to put up a sample question on the screen and read it out loud. So it says, Kristen walks up six flights of stairs to her office each morning as part of her exercise routine. She walks the first three steps, rests for 30 seconds, walks the next two flights at the same rate as she walked the first three flights, rests again for 30 seconds, then walks the last flight of stairs at the same rate, which graph represents Kristen walking up the stairs. So let's go ahead and graph this. So she walks up three flights of stairs and then rests for 30 seconds. So we'll go ahead, she starts at ground level, walks up and gets to the third flight. So the slope of this line right here would actually, it would represent how fast she's moving or her pace. So she gets up to the third flight or, and then rests for 30 seconds. Then she, then we're told that she walks the next two flights of stairs before resting again. And she's walking at the same pace. So the slope of the following line is going to be the same as the initial line. So we'll connect, go up two flights, and then stop. And those slopes are the same. Then it says she rests again for 30 seconds. So she's not moving up any flights of stairs, but time is passing. And it's 30 seconds again, so it should be the same length as her previous rest. Then we're told that she walks up the final flight at the same pace or with the same slope as her previous walking. And that would be your answer. Number five, determine the equation of a line when given the slope and a point on the line. A question could ask, find the equation of the line with a slope of three and passes through the point one, two. You'll need to find B, the y-intercept, or in other words, isolate B. We'll go ahead and put down the two for y and one for x and three for m. Now that we have those in place, we'll simply isolate B. We know now that the y-intercept B is a negative one. Then we simply will put everything together here. We know that the slope is three X plus negative one. That'll be your final answer. Number six, equation of a line from two points. To solve these problems, you'll need to know how to solve a system of equations which we've covered in a previous video. A question could ask, what is the equation of the line that passes through the points negative three, negative two, and one, six? First, we'll need to determine the slope and we'll do that by using a system of equations. From the point negative three, negative two, we have negative two equals m times negative three plus b. We're using the y equals mx plus b form. And for the point one six, we have six equals m times one plus b. To isolate the m here, we will subtract the lower equation from the upper equation because that will be b minus b. Those will cancel out. We have negative two minus six, which will be negative eight. And then we have negative three m minus one m, so negative four m, negative eight divided by negative four is two. Then we will find the y-intercept. Again, we can use point negative three, negative two uh, in the slope formula. So negative two equals, we determine the slope to be two times negative three plus b. Now we only have b to work with and that works out to be four. Putting all of this together then, we have y equals slope of two. So two x plus four. And that would be your answer. Number seven, use the slope of a line to solve problems. In particular, you'll need to determine if lines are parallel or perpendicular. Parallel meaning that they run side by side and have the same slope. Perpendicular meaning that they are opposite in slope uh, and uh, when graphed, they would meet at a 90 degree angle. So a question could ask, what is the slope of a line that is perpendicular to 5x minus 2y equals 1? First, we will get into the standard slope form. 
uh, and it works out to be y equals 5 halves x minus 1 half. If the question were to ask what is the slope of the line that is parallel, well then it would be the same, parallel would be 5 halves. Perpendicular, on the other hand, it will be the opposite slope. So what you're going to do is going to, you're going to flip the 5 and 2 and then reverse the sign out front. So that would end up being negative 2 fifths is the answer to this problem. Number 8. Compare functions shown in different ways. Those different ways could be through tables, graphs, equations, or written descriptions but you'll need to convert both of the functions into one of these, most likely into an equation. So a question could ask, two shops sell shirts. The first shop charges $24 per shirt plus $8 shipping. The other shop uses the equation C equals 22N plus 12, where C is equal to the total cost and N is the number of shirts and it asks, what is the difference in cost if ordering 10 shirts? We will convert the first shop's charges into an equation similar to the second shop's. I will call that C1 is equal to, well, they have $24 per shirt. If we follow the, sim if we follow the other equation, we will call the number of shirts N, and then we have $8 for shipping added on. We are already given the equation for the second shop, which I will call C2, that is 22N plus 12. If ordering 10 shirts, we will plug in 10 for the N. So for C1, we will have 24 times 10, so 240 plus eight, $248 for the first shop. For the second shop, we will have 22 times 10, so 220 plus 12 or 232. Then we will subtract 248 from 232 to get $16 being the final answer of the difference in cost. Number nine, functions in tables and graphs. You'll need to be able to recognize a function in a table or a graph by determining whether or not there is only one output for every input. For example, let's say that a function represents the equation for a line y equals 3x plus 2. So the function only has one input x. And for every input, there should only be one output. In other words, if we plugged in a certain number x, we couldn't be getting multiple y's out of that equation. So a question could ask which represents a function. So we are given two tables with different points and I've gone ahead and plotted those points to see what it looks like. The first, the first table has the points 0, negative 4, 0, 4, 2, negative 3, and 2, 3. As you can see, for a single input of x, there are multiple outputs y. So we can tell already that this is not a valid function. If graphed, we can see that it actually most likely cur curves around, but specifically these points here, which are given, if we run a vertical line, we're gonna be seeing that there are two outputs for every input x. On the other hand, this table has the points negative five, negative four, negative 4, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, 0, negative 1. It doesn't matter if, you're, if you get the same output for different inputs. As you can see in this case, when putting in negative 5 or negative 4, then you, the resulting y is they are both negative 4, but that does not make this valid, but that does not make this function invalid. It's only when there's multiple outputs for a single input. When graphed, this would look somewhat like this. And if you try passing a vertical line through any point of this function, you are only gonna end up with a single y value. So your answer would be this one. 
Number 10, evaluate functions. These are simply plug and chug problems. I've written the same question two slightly different ways. Let's go ahead and solve it. It asks, what is the value of the function x squared minus 3x when x equals negative 8? So we'll write in f, the function with an input of negative 8 equals negative 8 squared minus 3 times negative 8. Well, negative 8 squared is 64. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. And we have a, it's that subtracted, so it'll be plus 24. The answer is 88. Simple as that. And that wraps it up. Let me know what questions you have in the comments and stay tuned for videos on the other GED modules.